this video will make you literally thousands of dollars. So if you watch till the end, I'm going to go over five ways that you can make more money as a barbershop owner or a barber that don't involve raising prices at all. So let's get right into it. So these are the five tactics that we're going to cover in our video today. So the first thing we're going to talk about is having time standards. Like I said, a lot of these things don't involve raising prices at all. So that's the cool thing about what's everything on this list is that you don't even have to touch your prices in order to make more money. So let's start with number one, establishing time standards. So if you've watched the How to Price Your Haircuts course, which is in our Barber Mastermind group, you should have a clear idea of what you should be charging per minute in order for your business to be profitable. So for example, let's say you figured out that you need to be ch charging $60 an hour to, rank, to sustain your business, right? And so that translates to a dollar a minute, which is actually a really common thing in our industry. Like I heard that from barber school. I, I used to ask my barber instructor because he did a lot of designs. And I'm like, so how do you charge for something like that? And he basically told me a dollar a minute, right? And this was back in like 2013, right? So, um, you know, I don't know that he went through this process, but that, that kind of stuck with me. And later on, when somebody taught me what I'm going to show you guys in this video is that your pricing should always be related to time, right? So it really doesn't matter what you're doing. You should be having the same rate per minute. So whether it's a haircut, beard trim, shave, whatever you do, whatever service you offer, make sure the rate doesn't go below a certain whatever per minute, right? Whether it's a dollars, cents, whatever. And the only way you can know what that rate is, the right way, is to go through the How to Price Your Haircuts course, which is in the Barber Mastermind group or the Barbershop Owner Mastermind. I don't know what it's going to be called when this video comes out, but look for that. Look, there's a link in the description, right? But anyways, you need to have a standard rate per minute, okay? And that's what you, you figure that out by doing the math and saying, okay, this is what we need to charge per hour. This is what we need to make per hour in order to have the business be able to pay all the bills, pay all the barbers, pay yourself, and have some profit left over, right? <clears throat> so once you figure out, okay, that's my rate, this is what, I'd, let's say it's a dollar per minute since it's just easy math for this example, then everything else after that is super easy, right? So if you have a 30 minute haircut and, but you're taking, if you're charging $30 for a haircut, for example, and it takes you 45 minutes, Okay, so you're only earning 66 cents per minute, right? Because you take the 30, $30 divided by 45, you're making 66 cents per minute. And you went through this course, so you figured out, I need to actually be charging a dollar a minute just to pay the bills and have some profit, right? But you're only making 66 cents per minute. So something's gotta change, right? You either need to raise your price to $45 to get that dollar a minute, or you need to figure out how do I get that haircut done in 30 minutes, right? So if you figure out how to lower your haircut times, which we have a how to cut hair faster course, you can, you can basically keep your price the same, but make more money per minute because, and not have to like basically punish your client, right? Because of the fact that you are taking longer on their hair. So what, whichever way you decide to go, you have to make the decision for what's best for your business and what's best for your clientele. But you can either raise your price so that it meets that dollar a minute, so charge 45, or lower your haircut times. Either way, right? Or lower your expenses so that you can maybe get away with charging 66 cents per minute. Whatever, there's however you want to figure it out. The, the, the idea though is once you figure out this is what I need to charge in order for my business to be able to sustain itself, you have to meet that. Right? It's like non-negotiable. So you can either cut faster, raise your price, or lower your expenses so that way you can operate off that revenue. Okay. So the next thing is once you figure out that dollar per minute, well, okay, we just covered it. So reduce your haircut time incre or increase the price or decrease, I'm going to add that here, decrease your expenses. There you go. We're updating this live as we go. All right. And then, so once you figure out, okay, I, this is what I need to charge. This is this is the haircut time standard, okay? 
then now you need to not only be able to do it yourself if you're a barber, but you need to have your barbers do it too because it makes no difference whether if what you say you're charged, right? But if, if you say you're charged, if you have 30 minutes for an appointment, but the barbers are taking 45 or an hour, then the reality is you're still making this, this 66 cents per minute. Regardless of your appointment time is 30 minutes, but they're taking 45, you're still, it's still gonna translate to this, right? So you have to make sure that the time standards are now being upheld as well. So if you do this correctly, right, you should be able to take any service on your menu, right? And you should be able to divide it, the price by the amount of minutes that the service takes and you get the same rate or at least the minimum right so we can let's actually do this live right we're going to go to my barbershop's website and if you go to our service menu right here we're going to take this service right here the classic haircut right so it's 45 dollars. that's the normal price so we're going to take 45 divided by 30 that's a dollar 50 right that's what our rate is and then if we go to See, and if you notice all of the classic services, you notice something in common here? 45, 45, 45, right? And they're 30 minutes, right? Uh, I only put 30 to 45 as like kind of a buffer because sometimes barbers do run behind, but the idea is like the, they get 30 minutes for the appointment time. And so with that premium haircut, we uh, the rate is actually I think a little higher for this one so we charge 69 for a 45 minute service. So what does that look like? 69 divided by 45. Yeah, so the rate is a little bit higher, but the idea is if you take any service on our menu and divide it by the price by the time, then it will not dip below this $1.50. So we can keep going down. If you want to find another example, the, the pick two bundle that we offer, so clients can pick two, any two of these services, it's $25 for 15 minutes. So we take 25 divided by 15. Yeah. yeah, so the rate is a little bit higher with that one. But the idea is the minimum rate, right? The minimum is $1.50 per minute. So it shouldn't go below. So $9 for a neck shave. We're going to divide that by the five minutes that we give. Yeah. So actually some of these services get more profitable, right? So if the rate is higher, right, then that actually means there's more profit for the business. So all if you, you can do this uh, with the... You know, this is a, our service menu might have changed since I updated that, but the idea is it looks like a dollar fifty was the lowest we were able to go with our rate, and that doesn't include memberships. We're gonna we're gonna get into that later, but for the normal pricing, this is what this is what you want to try to achieve. So every service on your menu divide the price by the time it should equal the same, right? So let's talk about the next thing that I see that I made in the mistakes in the past about, and I see a lot of barbers do this, is how to eliminate gaps in your schedule. Because I don't know about you, but until recently, we had a lot of gaps in our schedule. I mean, like, it was annoying. It was like, I'm going to show you. <laughs> so this is what our schedule used to look like. Let me see, let me see if I can make this bigger. So this is our appointment book before I made these changes, right? So if you can see here, like this, these, we have clients here and, you know, somebody booked at nine and there's like this gap here. It's, uh, it was so nine, nine thirty. So there's like a 10 minute, uh, 20, 30 minute gap here. There's these little five minute gaps of wasted time here. And you see that? So white space in our business is wasted time or wasted opportunity. So then how do you prevent that from happening? Well, it's actually pretty simple. The idea is, the, is to, to, pre, to prevent this, to fix this, right? You wanna make all of your services at least, that like 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 or 60 or some combination of those, right? The reason why, because if you let people book at like 905, right? Because we used to do this, then they will do that, right? And it's gonna create these weird little gaps in your schedule like this, that you cannot fill. See, like this guy, this gap right here after Kevin, you know, and this, I don't know, I can't read his name, but these gaps we're not gonna be able to fill, right? So that's just essentially wasted time. So you don't wanna have any white space on your calendar, ideally, right? Because we sell time in this business, right? I wrote that, I wrote that up here. So in our business, we sell time, and the more time you sell, the more money you make. 
So if you're not selling your time, you're not making as much money as you could be. But to fix this, we kind of already went over the fix, but you need to figure out, first you need to figure out your price, your rate, whatever, that's the first step, right? And then once you figure that out, then you figure out the timing from there. So these are the most common options that, that I recommend. Um, but I will say that if you want no gaps at all, zero, then this is how you would set it up in your booking software. Then you only do 30 minutes or 60 minutes. You don't do 15, you don't do 45. Because I'll show you what that looks like when you only do 30 minute and 60 minute services. It will look like this. So this is what our appointment book turned into after we made that change. As you can see here on Sam's schedule, zero gaps, zero. Tiffany's schedule, zero, besides this empty one at the end, right? And the only reason that's empty is because nobody booked that time, okay? So you can literally have no gaps in your schedule if you set this up correctly. So you, there's only, it's a, it's a pretty simple change. Uh, I mean, it takes, it takes some work, it's not easy, but simple. So you wanna set it up in your software so that they can only book on the hour or on the half hour. That's it, right? Super simple. And then your services are either 30 minutes or 60 minutes. If you set it up like that, you will have no gaps in your schedule. And it's beautiful, right? So it goes from this, tons of gaps, right? Tons of little empty, annoying white spaces to this where Somebody could book in that time, right? It's not just wasted time, right? The only reason it's not is is open, right, is because nobody booked it. But it's not because it's like they can't. Like that, those spots will show up online, unlike these, unlike this schedule right here. So really simple. Um, and then if you want to take it one step down, maybe you're okay with a few gaps. Then what you want to do in your booking software is set it up so people can book on the quarter hour. So what that means is basically on the 15 minute bar mark so when somebody's going to book online what that looks like is they can book at either 9 9 15 9 30 or 9 45 right and you so you can have 15 minute services so that way if somebody books at a, like a haircut at uh, 9 or 10 o'clock here right then they can book another one they can book their uh, so somebody could book in right here at 10 30 or they can book at 10 45 right uh, for a 15 minute service. So you can't actually have, even if you do have fifth, like little 15 minute gaps in your schedule, if you have 15 minute services, I call them like gap fillers, then you they can like slide in there, right? So we, um, so we created some 15 minute services to fill those gaps. So that way the, when, cause I knew that when we switched from 30 minute and 60 minute services to allowing people to book on like the quarter hour that that was gonna create some gaps, right? So we created some gap filler type of services so that way people can kind of slide in there and hopefully we don't have any wasted time but honestly it is kind of nice having those little tiny gaps every now and then especially if you're a busy barber who's falling behind right so i'm, I'm okay actually with a little bit of air in our books now uh, because sometimes the barbers just need a break right they've been cutting for hours non-stop or we fall behind right so sometimes it's nice having those little gaps but if you're just talking about pure, like optimizing the schedule for no gaps, period, no wasted time, then you do 30 minute and 60 minutes. If you're okay with a little bit of gaps, then you want to, you can do allow, allow people to book on the quarter hour and then by doing 15 minute services and 45 minute services as well. Now, I don't recommend ever, right, letting people book five minute services uh, 10 minute services, 20 minute services. Don't do that, right? Because that's that's gonna throw all of this off, right? So either do 15 minute, 30 minute, 45, 60, or do 30 or 60 only, right? Don't do anything else, right? Because if you do that, you will have a ton of gaps in your schedule that you cannot fill. And don't let people book at whatever time they want, either on the hour or the quarter hour. That's it, right? Uh, you know, if, and if you're doing 30 minute and 60 minutes, and you're shooting for just pure I want, I want to sell all my time, I don't want any gaps, then only book, let people book on the hour or the half hour. That's it, right? So hopefully that made sense to you guys. Um, yes, but you have to figure that out. You have to figure out your timing first, right? Because then you work backwards from there. So I, let's say you figure out, okay, I need to do a haircut in 30 minutes in order to, and then not change my price. So let's go off the 30, $30 price, right? 
So let's say we need to charge $30. So you can either go, you can either raise your price and keep your haircut time at 45 minutes and allow people to book on the quarter hour, or you can lower your haircut time to 30 minutes and then only allow people to book on the half hour. Whatever you want to do, but the idea is you want to meet that that step. You want to meet that that rate from from our previous example. Now I'm using a dollar per minute because that's the example. That doesn't mean that's what I'm recommending for you. You have to do the math to figure out what's right for your business. But that's what I'm using for this example. And like I said, if you uh, do this correctly, you can go from having a ton of gaps in your schedule to basically having none, right? Um, and this this is what it'll look like. <clears throat> So yeah, hopefully that made sense to you. Let's move on to the next one. Oh, yeah, this is, this is a really important one. But let, let's say you decide to go for pure, like I just want no gaps in my schedule. Well, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna have no time, like no buffer time in your, in your appointments, which is great in terms of like you're fully maximizing your day and your barber's days. However, you are going to have potentially, such, it's going to be much more pressure on you and on your team to really stay on time, right? Because if there's no catch-up time at all, right, then the barbers better be staying on time. Because if you have just 30 minutes or 15 minutes, everybody coming in on back to back to back, right? Unless you have a no-show, right, <laughs> uh, then the barber is cutting all day so this is just something to keep in mind right this is going to put some pressure pressure on the team if you if you shoot for full just full appointment book optimization no gaps nothing then you need to make sure your team is staying on time right or you're going to maybe put some buffer time in there for them or something i don't know but just just know that going in there that if you have no gaps then you there's, it's likely that you'll fall behind, right? Unless your team is very good at time management. And then I also, I don't recommend um, doing, letting people book add-ons online <clears throat> with, with some exceptions, which I'll go over. But if we're, sh if we're trying to get appointments, right? And we're trying to shoot, shoot for a minimum rate per minute. So this, this is the downside to doing this, right? Potentially, right? So don't, don't skip this step right here because this is going to completely throw off everything I just said. So if you set up a haircut to be 30 minutes and you will only allow people to book on the half hour then think, and, and then you let them book like a five minute add-on or 10 minute add-on, whatever, right? That whole half hour is gone now, right? It's for a five minute sh shampoo, a $5 shampoo in this example, right? Or a $10 wax. So it doesn't actually make sense if you think about it to, to let people book those add-ons if it's gonna take up a whole half hour slot or a 15 minute slot. Right? You might as well make it a 15 minute service and charge for 15 minutes of time, which is exactly what we did. So if you look at our pricing menu, this is why we created the pick two bundle, right? It's a 15 minute service and they can pick any two. So you can do you can copy my my strategy. You can pick any combination of services you want. It has to make it has to be worth it, right? That's how we sold it. So in each one of these services alone would probably be fifteen dollars on their own, ten to fifteen. So we created a bundle. So pick any two. It doesn't matter. Pick any two you want, and it's twenty five dollars, right? Because that's what our rate is: a dollar fifty per minute, fifteen minute service should be $25 or more, right? So I'm okay with you booking an add-on if you wanna pay for the 15, the $25, right? But I, people, if you go to our, our website, you can't choose just an eyebrow wax or just a shampoo, because that's gonna waste our time, basically. You can do the pick two bundle, or we created a wash, wash and wax bundle, where it's a 30 minute service for 45, and you get all, you can get all this, right? But it's a 30 minute service, and you're gonna pay 45, and if you notice, it's 30 minutes for $45, and it's the same price as any of the other 30-minute services. So you have to make sure that every service on your menu is the same price, and that if it's even if it's an add-on, right? And don't let people book anything less than 15-minute services, and make sure you're charging appropriately for that 15-minute service. So hopefully that made sense, but if you allow somebody to book an add-on, that's five minutes, right? And you're set up your appointment book to the way we just suggested, 
then it's going to waste your time, right? So don't do it. You can tell them it's just like, I'll do it if by request only, or if I have time, I'll add it on. But uh, I would not let people book that online, right? Um, yeah, there you go. So we just, we just covered that. So if you allow clients to book on the quarter hour, somebody books a 30 minutes haircut, five minute shampoo, that takes up 30 minutes of your time. So you'll have 10 minutes of wasted time, right? <coughs> Um, so then we request we made it by request only just like I said they can't book single services but if they wanted to do bundles no problem we have no problem with that yeah and make sure that you are <laughs> realizing that before you make these changes that it's gonna cause some put some pressure on your team right that it does it does uh, make it so it's gonna be easier to fall behind if there's no gaps in your schedule right <clears throat> All right, let's move on to strategy number three, which is decoy pricing, which is awesome. Uh, we'll get into this. This one should be a quick one. So I don't know if you guys have ever noticed, but if you go to the movie theater, they almost always have three sizes of everything, right? They're small, medium, and large. And the reason why, right, is they don't actually really want you to buy the medium, right? <laughs> what they do is this kind of acts as a price anchor. So if you notice, there's a big jump between this price for a small and this price for a medium, okay? So it goes from three to six and a half dollars. But the jump from six and a half to seven is only 50 cents. So seven looks like a great deal because it's like, oh, for only 50 cents more, I can just get a large. And so this medium actually acts as a price anchor in a way or some people call it decoy pricing. Because what the, what the movie theater wants you to do is buy a large, right? So they, they raise the price of the medium to make this look like a better deal. So that's exactly what we did, right? <clears throat> so we want people to book a classic haircut in our, in our case, right? That's what we like to do. I like to see people coming in every 30 minutes. And so what we did was we created a premium haircut option that's 45 minutes. It's more time and includes a shampoo, $69 now, and because we just raised our prices. And then regular haircuts, 45. So the idea is like, if you have two, so I, I don't recommend having more than three options, um, but we, so we had just have two. We have a classic haircut. That's our normal like maintenance haircut. You know, that's what, 80% of our revenue comes from, and that's what most, most guys are booking. But we also have a premium haircut option, and what that does is it acts as a price anchor. We don't really want people booking the premium haircut, right? But, but people do book it, right? But the, when they go to our website and they see premium haircut for $69, right? They're gonna, they might be like, oh, that's a lot of money. But compared to $69, $45 kind of starts to look a lot more reasonable. Does that make sense? So the reason you want to have that on there is because it makes your regular haircut price look more like a deal. So you could even go higher. You could do double the price or triple, right? And it will steer people towards booking the service that you want. And believe it or not, right? People still book this service. People pay us $69 or whatever um, for basically nothing more than just 15 minutes of extra time and a shampoo. And we've also been experimenting with that lately to uh, steer new clients towards booking that service because as you might understand as a barber, new clients typically take longer. Right? They don't know what they want. They might show up late because they don't know where you are. Um, maybe they haven't had a haircut in a while. There's a lot of reasons why new clients could take longer. The idea is we started to use this service in other ways besides just ask, ask, uh, acting as a price anchor. So you can have two services. I, I recommend starting with two. You can add maybe a third one later. When this, we actually have three versions of our some of our services, which I'll get into. But you can have a regular haircut. You can call it whatever you want. Regular haircut, classic haircut, whatever. That's that's Just pick which one you want to steer people towards. And then the other one, you raise the price on, right? So that way... And the cool thing is that even people still book that. Even some of our regulars will book the premium just for the extra time. Maybe they like really like their barber or they're 
believe it or not, there's people out there that are perfectly fine paying one and a half, two times the normal price for the extra time and attention. There's people out there that have money, right? So don't think that just, it, it might be sound expensive to you or to me, but there's people out there that make like, you know, a million dollars a year. So they, this is nothing for them, okay? So don't, don't feel bad about charging this price. And you, they won't book it if it's not on your menu either. So just put something on the, on the menu, charge so high that like nobody's ever gonna book this. And you'll be surprised, like some people actually will, right? Especially if you make it sound like a really great experience in the website description and everything. So that acts as sort of a price anchor and like we're experimenting with this now, but we're starting to steer new clients to booking that service. So we'll, you know, I'll come, I'll come back and maybe update this, this course if, uh, if we find that that makes it. Actually, you know, I just found out yesterday. So I compared the new client retention for the last six months to the last year because we started doing this, uh, basically giving uh, new clients the premium haircut for the price of a classic haircut on their first visit. So that did two things. It gave the barbers more time with new clients and the, the what I was hoping for, which was was that new client retention would go up. And it turns out that since we started doing that, new client retention has increased by a significant amount. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna probably keep that permanent until we find something better. And it also is like a, it's like a win-win for everybody. New clients get more time. So we have more time to perfect their haircut on their first visit, which means they're more likely to come back and they perceive it as a great deal. And we're not really discounting if you think about it. I mean, maybe a little bit, cause we're getting 30 minute worth of revenue for 45 minute service. But if it means that they come back, that makes up for it, right? So that does make, I, I can tell you right now, at least in our case, it does make sense to give new clients more time if it increases new client retention, which it did in our case. <clears throat> so I recommend having at least two services, two versions of every service. So you can have your regular haircut, premium haircut, regular beard trim, premium beard trim. And then with the beard trim specifically, uh, we created a third version, which is a basic beard trim. Like I said, we created earlier, we, we decided to start letting clients book on the quarter hour, right? So that's gonna create these little 15 minute gaps in the schedule. So beard trims we found are pretty simple services, right? And we can do, a lot of us can do a basic beard trim, no hot towel, no razor, just trimmers only, shape up the beard, use the trimmers, boom, they're done in 15 minutes, right? So we created a basic version of, you can call it economy, um, budget, uh, whatever. We call it a basic beard trim. Um, to try to make it clear like, okay, there's basic, no razor, no hot towel, then there's classic, which is a hot towel, face shave, face razor shave, everything. And then there's the premium, which is more time. And then we use the steam machine with the aromatherapy and everything to make it feel like a premium experience. So there's actually three versions of the basic. Um, I've been wanting to do this for the haircut too, but the problem with haircuts is that people will book the basic haircut, right? And um, they will come in and want like a skin fade and a hard part and everything. And it's like, no way we can do that in 15 minutes. So. We'll, maybe we'll try in the future, we'll, we'll try this with the haircuts, but I've already done that in the past and I can tell you that people will book it and it's not a basic haircut, right? Um, so, but yeah, you can have, for a basic, for a beard trim, you can have just, and you can even do, maybe now that I think about it, like a basic head shave, right? Like cl clippers only, you know, no razor, no, nothing fancy, just, and then boom, 15 minutes. And then, you, so whatever, you think about what can you do in 15 minutes, right? And you also have to consider the, fa the fact that clients might book this, the wrong one on accident, right? So pl make sure you um, kind of bake that in to your, to your planning here. That's why we haven't done the basic haircut yet because I've already, I already know clients are, are gonna book that and we're not gonna have enough time. So it's like, we'll just frustrate everybody, right? Like I said earlier, you might be surprised, but like people actually will book the premium services, even if they're not new clients. Um, so having like a luxury type of service that's like one and a half to two times the price will do two things. You will make more money because some people will book it and pay the full price, right? Just because they want the extra time and attention. And it will make your regular price seem like a better deal. 
And yeah, we covered this already, but I've, we've been experimenting with having new clients book the new premium. It works. It does increase retention, at least in our case, right? So if you want to see the most up-to-date version of our pricing, just go to our website, houseshaves.com slash services. And these services, I don't know when you're watching this video, but the services on here will always be up to date because uh, that's what our clients see, right? All right, so that's the last thing. <clears throat> that's the last two things, okay? So add-on services, super easy way to make more money. Um, if you don't offer it, they won't buy it. Simple concept, right? So a lot of barbers just do haircuts, some do haircuts and beard trims, but sometimes clients want more than that, right? So shampoos are an easy one to start with. Pretty much everybody could use a shampoo after their haircut. But some of you guys might not be offering some of these other services, so I wanted to give you an idea of some of the things that we've tried experimenting with that you might want to consider. And I can tell you that we probably do more eyebrow waxing than shampoos, right? So we started offering eyebrow waxing, I don't know, a few years ago, and I was actually surprised at how many people um, ended up getting it. So yeah, offer it, right? And it's a pretty simple service, especially if you use the, uh, the hard wax, not the one that requires the strip. Uh, the the one that you just put on, let it dry, peel it off, right? So that, that's the one, a lot less messy, and um, nose wax, so we do eyebrow, nose, and ear waxing. And um, these services take like five minutes each, right? So the same thing with the shampoo, you gotta have time standards too, even with the add-ons. Uh, we do, we've offered beard straightening in the past, so taking somebody's beard, we just got like a $30 beard straightener off Amazon, Boom, do you want us to straighten your beard for you? It actually makes the beard trim a lot more even. It looks great when people do that. We've offered color services. And then the, these are some other things that we've experimented in the past with. So consider adding some of these add-ons. Again, if you don't offer it, they won't buy it. But I do think that there is such a thing as having too much on your menu. So you just want to really figure out, like, out of all the things you offer, what are, like, your top five services, right? And you may want to consider just, like, killing the other ones that people aren't booking. That's what we did with the facials. We found that people weren't really like booking it, so we just like took it off the menu, right? It's okay to take stuff off the menu. Right? Not a lot of people are booking it. Some like two people might be upset, but it's not worth keeping that on the menu for two people, right? And then, but the key here is whatever you decide to offer as add-ons, make sure it's the same rate as your other services. And again, I don't recommend letting people book these services online individually unless you create some sort of bundle, right? So that way it's still the same rate per minute as if you were doing a regular haircut. I, you know, and ideally, like this, and this is what we did, the price for an individual, like the champ, this is another example of decoy pricing. If you look at our service menu, the price for an individual uh, waxing, right, is $15 each, each. So if you just come in, if you come sit in my chair, and you just booked a haircut and then you want me to do the eyebrow wax, I'm like, cool, I'll do that, it's $15 extra. Or for 25, I'll do t whatever whatever two services you want. So it's not like, it doesn't go from 15, so if they, let's say they want eyebrows and nose, right? Which is actually pretty common. In, instead of being $30, it'll be 25. So it, it does two things. It gets people to, yeah, let, let, let me just care, take care of both while I'm here. So they perceive it as a great deal and they can actually book this online now because it, it's taking up 15 minutes. So it's not actually taking away from a, an opportunity to do a haircut time now. So super, super important that you, that you figure that out, what I just said. Make sure that you don't let people book these add-ons online unless they're part of a bundle. And then the individual um, add-ons themselves, make sure you price them higher at a way higher rate than if they were part of a bundle. So for example, we price the waxing at $15 each, like I said, and then we charge 25 though, if you wanna just do, if you pick two, so. But again, be careful not to put too many services on your menu because chances are 80, 90% of your revenue will come from two services, right? In our case, it's haircuts and beard trims. That's 90%. Out of everything we offer, 90% of our revenue comes from haircuts and beard trims. <laughs> so like that other 10% is everything else. Shaves, head shaves, face shaves, all the add-ons, everything. Haircuts themselves are like 80%, classic haircuts. And then 10, like, like five to 10% is beard trims, 
everything else is in that whatever is left over, right? So we could eliminate everything from our from our menu, and still keep, have like ninety percent <laughs> be unchanged, basically. So keep that in mind. Don't add too much to your menu because chances are, most of your services are most of the revenue is going to come from just a few services. All right, and the last thing, and this one's a little bit more of a, a newer one that we've been experimenting with for the last few years, but this is this was a huge, huge mindset shift for me. But I used to be concerned with what am I making today or this week, and you know, still obviously a, a, something to keep top of mind for me for sure. But one thing I've realized is that the money is really made in the long term. So long-term thinking is the most important thing I think you can develop as a barbershop owner or a barber because you wanna consider the fact that if you can keep these clients coming back long-term, that's where the money is made, right? Because then you don't need to go out and get new clients every month if you are keeping the ones that are coming in. So you can make way more money and keep and not have to be so dependent on marketing if you just keep clients coming back and keep them coming back longer. So the question is, how do you do that? How do you keep people coming back? One of the ways that we found to do this is memberships. So we created a monthly subscription that clients can basically get a discounted rate on their haircut. And in exchange, they they well, they get a discount on their services and we get a long-term client that's regularly coming in now because they're paying for the haircut, so they're probably going to come in, right? So we found that clients with memberships are actually spending, on average, three or four times more than clients that don't have a membership. So it's 100% worth that little discount, right? Because before we started implementing memberships, our lifetime value or the life cycle of a client for ours was about six months, right? Which is not good, right? Six months. So basically somebody would come to us and they would come six times and they would stop coming. With memberships, that has increased to like 18 months. So if you think about it, even if, if somebody's paying full price for a haircut, $40, $45, but they're only coming for six months, we're actually making way more money in the long run off somebody who has a membership, even though they're paying a discounted rate. So memberships are like a no-brainer. Everybody should be doing memberships. And it's super simple. So, and this is the way we started doing it. Well, let me, okay, let me finish this list, right? Yeah, so I haven't really found a better way. <laughs> so we, you could try a loyalty program you could try selling packages of services, which is sort of like a membership in a way, right? So maybe instead of charging them monthly, you can you can try uh, like buy 10 haircuts, get 12 free or something like that, right? You could try a loyalty program that's, you know, you get points for every time you come in and you can redeem the points. Clients definitely appreciate that for sure. So anything that increases retention is like worth looking into worth worth testing you gift cards are probably like the simplest way to do it just get clients to buy a, a hundred dollar gift card for the price of you know eighty dollars or whatever right so that you get the idea is you get that cash up front and now they're re, they're really likely to come back because in a way they've kind of prepaid for their services but memberships for me have been the most effective way at really keeping clients coming back long term they're so that met people that have memberships spend more money and come back way more frequently because they're paying for it right and one thing we've been experimenting with lately this is pretty new um, but we started we started with the monthly memberships and we ended up creating an annual version too which is an even a bigger discount but for the the same idea is like so this is what we found people that don't have a membership uh, churn out way faster than people that do so pe basically, people that have a monthly membership stick around longer than people that don't have a membership at all, period. The data, that's what the data says. Now what we're, now what we're gonna be seeing in the next year or so is what I think is gonna happen is that anybody that has the annual membership is gonna stick around way longer than any anybody that just has the monthly membership. 
It's because they prepay for a year in advance, right? So instead of canceling their membership before the year mark, they have to stick around for the year, right? So super, super effective at keeping people coming back to the shop. Um, and if you're a barbershop owner, this is, this is a huge thing here, but it keeps people loyal to your barbershop, right? Not to your barbers. If they're paying your, you, the barbershop, for a membership, they're way more likely to keep coming back even if the barber leaves. So that's a huge, huge unlock, right? Because if you're like me and you're a barbershop owner, you want your barbers to be successful. You want them to be busy. You want them to be happy, making money, right? But there's going to come a time where they leave, right? And what you might not want them to take every single client with them, right? Because you put in all the money, you put all the marketing, you put in all the effort, you took the risk of building the barbershop, you risked everything you had, you put all your money in just for these barbers who came in with nothing to take it with them. Like That's not a really great scenario, right? So what you want to do is try to create ways for the clients to be a little bit more loyal to your business. And membership's a great way of doing that. Right, so what we found since we started offering memberships is that anybody that has a membership is way, way more likely to come back if somebody, if their barber leaves, period. Like there's just, that's just what we've seen, right? They, some of them might cancel, right? But the reality is if they have a membership, they're going to, they're more likely to give somebody else a shot because like I have a membership for this place, right? For this shop, not with that person. So I'm going to give somebody else another shot before I cancel my membership. So yeah, super effective client retention tactic. Also, this gets into, you know, a little bit later, like higher level business strategy stuff. But if you're a barbershop owner and you ever want to sell your shop one day, which you probably will, now you're probably hard to imagine it right now, but there's going to come a time where you want to sell your shop. In general, if you have two businesses that have the same amount of revenue, there's been multiple studies done on this, but Let's say you have, you know, two barbershops doing 500 grand a year in revenue. Barbershop number one is pure cash flow type business, right? Clients coming in, they pay for their service, they leave, like a normal barbershop. So that's going to be valued way less than another barbershop with the same revenue, but a lot of their revenue comes from memberships. The reason why is because when people are buying a business, what they're factoring in is what's the likelihood that this revenue is going to continue after the owner leaves so if you can show the potential acquirer of your business that this revenue is stable predictable you're going to get a higher multiple on your business so you could potentially get two maybe three times more than the barber than the other barbershop that's just doing like cash you know pay for their haircut as they get it type of type of scenario which is what a lot of barbershops do so if you want to be able to exit your barbershop one day and get the maximum amount of money for your business, do look into memberships. Like it's a no brainer, right? You have to have the right software. I think don't try to do this manually. That's a, that's a we, mistake we made in the beginning. The software I use is called Zenati. Z-E-N-O-T-I. Zenati. I don't get paid for promoting them. That's what I use. I love it. And memberships can really complicate the business, but I, I feel like it's worth it, right? So this is the last strategy that we're gonna go over is memberships. And got, if you, this is more way more complicated strategy, but super, super effective in the long run because it increases retention for clients. They're more likely to be loyal to the barbershop and you could potentially get a way higher, way more money for selling your business if you have memberships uh, kind of baked into your overall strategy. So those are the five that we covered, just to recap real quick. So we covered, make sure your time standards, make sure you're making this the, the rate. The, there's a certain rate that your business needs, whether you know it or not, that's, that's what you need to answer, right? So fig, once you figure out what you need to be charging, make sure you start to adjust your services to make, make that, that uh, minimum, whatever that rate is. Get rid of the gaps in your schedule. Don't allow people to book add-on. Make it depends. Go for, decide which strategy you're going to use. Whether you're going to let people book on the 30-minute mark, half hour, whatever. But don't allow people to book add-ons. Don't let people book at like 9:05 or whatever, right? Because uh, it's just going to create a lot of gaps in your schedule. Try 
experiment with using decoy pricing. So go go on your service menu, create like a premium or luxury version of all of your services, charge like two or three times more than the normal price. And you some people will actually book it, but you'll have probably a lot more people booking the regular, which is what you want, right? And then create some add-ons, but don't go too crazy with this because like I mentioned, it's possible to have too much and probably like 80, 90% of your services are gonna come, or your revenue is gonna come from just a handful of services. And the last thing, a little bit more advanced strategy, but consider offering memberships because it will increase client retention and people that have memberships are way, way more valuable than people that don't. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you wanna talk more to me more about this stuff and I can help you implement this stuff in your business, I have a free group called the Barber Mastermind or Barbershop Mastermind or whatever it's called now. There's a link in the description of this video if you wanna learn more. Um, otherwise, hope you found this video helpful and I hope it makes you lots of money.